Hello, everybody. Thanks for inviting me. Um, I happen to be a person who believes that open source is fantastic, and those who produce open source code should make tons of money. And I believe it's one of the best ways of serving open source is to make money. And I'm here to, I was asked to address the issue of open source and cloud and whether they go together or not. And I think the, the, the question actually is nuanced, meaning there is no clear yes or no answer to this. So first, just my view on cloud and why it's so immensely important. To me, this is now the, the final goodbye to client server. We're moving into an era where software, by definition and from the start, has to be designed for horizontal scale and for massively distributed deployment. And every previous shift in IT infrastructure has been essentially built on singular servers running singular software. But today, when you build for cloud, you must build for scale. And we see it in the database business where people are wondering whether the relational databases can really make it into the cloud. And it seems that MySQL is the only one really doing it because it scales out. And this also explains why the NoSQL movement is out there building and trying to build massively distributed database solutions for the future cloud. So I actually believe that cloud will be an enormous shift in the industry. And we're just seeing the beginning now of all the business opportunities, all the opportunities to create fantastic new software for the world. So in terms of just business numbers, here's an estimate that today 2% of IT workloads run, run in a cloud environment, and in five years it's 20%. This is 20% of the new world, and, in, and of course the universe of IT workload is growing as well, uh, which means that the, the growth can be even more stunning. And that's what we hope for, of course, but nobody knows. Uh, I would think that 2010 is the year of all kinds of cloud projections and announcements, and it will take many years to see what really happens and what people really deliver. But, but this is what analysts are saying today. So then, the question of cloud computing and free and or open source software, how does it work? And it sort of starts from, I start from the top of the stack with software as a service, platform as a service, infrastructure as a service. And at the top of the stack, I have a disappointment. I've been in open source for 10 years now, and every year I've stated that I think open source will go up to the application level. I think open source will disrupt the old applications. Open source will be the foundation for new applications as they are deployed. But it's not happening. Software as a service is essentially a business of closed source vendors today. They may run on open source. They may run on Linux. They may run, use Lucene and MySQL and the whole LAMP stack. But we see very few SaaS vendors who are truly open source and dis, uh, distributing their own software uh, to the world as open source. In platform service, you find a little bit more of it. And then when you go down to infrastructure service, that's where you find most of the open source in, in the cloud environment. And I looked at it, I was thinking, so does cloud require open source or does open source require cloud? And does it all have to be open or can it be closed? And it was interesting that if in the infrastructure, uh, infrastructure as a service layer, if you look at the, the public clouds, the leader in the market, Amazon, is not open source. They've developed fantastic code, they have a fantastic service, but they don't share that code with others. But the challenger coming up, Rackspace, just yesterday went open source. So here you see the, di the dynamics where the first and leading player is, is closed source, which triggers the challenger or challengers to go open source. And maybe this will spread and we'll see more open source in that space. Then if you go to the on-premise clouds or private clouds, as some people like to call them, there I think, and here, James, you may have better information on, on the history, but I believe Open Nebula was the first one and it was open source. And then came Eucalyptus and is open source and is now the most popular cloud platform out there that is in, in GA state. And what we are seeing is that the newcomers are also going open source. So VMOps, which changed its name to cloud.com, announced, I think, in April or May that they are going open source. So here you see the other mechanism where the early pioneers of the market were open source, and so they are setting the trend for everybody coming after them into that market. The interesting question, of course, is now how strong is this movement? How strong is 
how strong are the market forces driving fast solutions here? Will it drive VMware to open source their products? Will it make Red Hat a huge success in cloud because they're open source? Those things we don't know. But it will be interesting to observe. And something big, I'm sure, will happen. But it's, it's not a given that open source will win or open source will dominate. Because when you look at the big players today, VMware, Amazon, and Microsoft with Azure, they are not open source. Maybe they, their APIs are becoming more open and becoming industry standards. Maybe they will open their APIs. Maybe they'll open some small parts. But it's not like we are seeing yet a strong switch over to open source. And again, I remember back 10 years ago when I joined the open source world, and we thought that open source would just sweep and take over the whole market, and eventually there would be no closed source software anymore. Well, that was a little bit naive. I think the LAMP stack did very, very well, but it's not like it has taken over the whole universe yet. But let's see what happens, because there's, there's interesting dynamics here. And then, so if we look at the motivations, why do people go open source or why don't they? And I can understand here in the audience if there are principled people who say, of course, I only produce open source code and everything else is forbidden, I would never touch it. But companies are pragmatic. And here are the reasons why they would or would not go open source. So why is VMware not an open source company? Well, they have a business model built based on not being open source. They think they have innovations to protect, and maybe they have, so they don't want to show their code because it's an early market. Or they may not have customers asking for it. Could be that big data centers are happy running closed source code, so we don't know. But then there are also very strong reasons to go open source, and you can combine them as you like. Some people go open source to just get more usage, a bigger installed base. Some do it in order to get participation into the product, get bug fixes, bug reports, contributions, integration with other products. Some do it for competitive aspects. That probably was behind Rackspace's decision on OpenStack. It was a competitive move against Amazon. And some do it because of customer demands. Customer asked them to go, go open source. So who knows where this will go? I think it's great to see so much open source here and I specifically like one aspect of this. Most open source, and I mean free and or open source successes so far, have been disruptors. MySQL was a disruptor in the database market. Linux a disruptor in the open source market. In cloud computing, we have maybe the biggest opportunity yet to show that open source can be an innovator of the new and not just a disruptor of the old. And it's yet to be seen, but I hope it will work. And I tried to find some evidence of it, and all I can show is the download numbers of our open source platform and how it is growing, and it's growing very rapidly, and we're thinking, okay, this is a good sign. Some people like open source software, they are downloading it. So my wish is that it's open source that will dominate, but in reality, I don't know, and you may know as, as well as I do. But I'm you know, very happy to be at Eucalyptus and be driving one part of this initiatives. So thanks. Thank you very much, Martin.